Hi there, this is Dr. Robert Sivis, the Carb Addiction Doc, back with part two of our understanding and treatment of type 2 diabetes. The first part of this was really the general principles. In this episode, we're going to talk about the exact practical strategies that you can take step by step to get yourself into remission off medication with normal blood indices if you have type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, or prediabetes. One of the caveats that I will put out there is please make sure that you are followed by a doctor for certain guidelines, but make sure it's not your current treatment endocrinologist, that it's somebody who understands a, the ketogenic principles of treating type 2 diabetes into remission. So here we go. The first principle is no carbohydrates, no diabetes. But don't stop all carbohydrates on one day. Do it in a stepwise fashion. So the first most important thing about treating type 2 diabetes is number one, ask your doctor to check blood work. Check your lipid panel, check your fasting insulin, check your hemoglobin A1C, and check your fasting blood sugar all at one time. That's our baseline, irrespective of what it is. The next thing is this, either through self-monitored finger checks or preferably through a continuous glucose monitor that you wear on your belly or your arm, have some way of predictably knowing exactly what your blood sugar is all the time. When I say all the time, about every five minutes on a CGM. Just as a side note, it is ludicrous that I can buy a Fitbit for less than $99 and I can buy an EKG monitor for less than $75, but it costs $1,200 for three months of CGM monitoring. That is something the FDA and this country needs to sort out if we're going to treat diabetes properly. Nevertheless, after you've quantified your blood work, please, please, please make sure you have a way of monitoring your blood sugar multiple times a day, a minimum of six to eight times a day with finger sticks or every five minutes with a CGM, which is preferable. The feedback is very useful. The next step is don't change anything. Check your blood sugar, know what it is. And the numbers that I use to start with are 160, 120, and 80. Okay? We never want your blood sugar above 160. Our target as we deprescribe is around 120. And we never want to go below 80 because the risk of hypoglycemia there is high. Eventually, we want to be below 100 continuously. But for now, those are the three numbers that I target. And the first step is the ownership of the fact that carbohydrates going in your face cause your type 2 diabetes. So the most important thing is to develop a lifestyle, a paradigm where you progressively remove carbohydrates from your lifestyle and replace them with a high fat diet. Don't do it all at once because you'll come crashing down. Do it in stages. My first stage is to eliminate sugar from anything you drink. And I don't care if they tell you it's healthy or not. I don't care if it's orange juice or a Coke. Get rid of anything you drink with carbohydrates. Consolidate that over a week or two. Then... Get rid of the grains and the starches, the rice and the potatoes. The more carnivorous you can be during the stage, the better. Stage three is to get rid of snacks. And I don't care if the snack is a carbohydrate snack or any other calorie containing snacks. The principle here in stage three is to get rid of snacks, particularly carbohydrate snacks, but to introduce, by now you should be in a degree of ketosis, introduce a concept of intermittent fasting, where you're going long periods of time without the consumption of any calories, so that you're living off your body's stores and preferably getting into an 18-6, where you're eating two meals a day in a six-hour period and you're going 18 hours, 18 hours a day without eating. Work toward that. And then the fourth stage is to get rid of fruit and any other sources of carbohydrates. By about anywhere from a month to two to three months, you should be off all carbohydrates. Now, during that time, I want you to continuously monitor your blood sugar, preferably with a CGM, okay? Here's the goal for treatment. It's a paradigm shift away from an endocrinology treatment. We don't treat your blood sugar based on what you're about to put in your face. We treat your blood sugar directly. So if you're on insulin, do not give yourself insulin before a meal. Monitor your blood sugar after a meal and use a short-acting insulin to keep your blood sugar below 160 on a sliding scale. 
The goal is to slowly reduce your insulin utilization as you reduce your carbohydrate consumption coming off that insulin slowly or reducing the number slowly as your body becomes more insulin sensitive and we use a very high number 160 is actually a very high blood sugar number although most diabetics often live above that number but it's not a dangerous ketoacidosis number so keep your number below 160 and i tolerate a higher blood sugar to get you off the insulin to increase insulin sensitivity we also try to get our patients off the long-acting insulins if we possibly can if they are true di uh, type 2 diabetics and the reason to do the blood work is to make sure that you really are a 2, not a 1. And we, we see plenty of patients that are misdiagnosed. If you're insulin, if you're hyperinsulinemic, you're a 2, you're not a 1. If your insulin level is very low and your blood sugar is elevated, I'd be concerned you have LADA, LADA, Google that, or that you're a true type 1. Nevertheless, uh, bring your insulin number down. If you're not, bring your insulin utilization down. If you're not on insulin, Stay on metformin. Ideally, you're on metformin. If you don't tolerate it, that's fine. But I like to use anywhere from 500 to 1,000 milligrams of, of metformin twice a day. Metformin's a great drug in that it increases insulin sensitivity and hastens the time that you get yourself out of insulin resistance into insulin sensitivity. And eventually, you should be able to come off metformin, although there's some debate as to exactly when. Depends on your blood sugars and your A1C at that time. If you're on a statin, stop your statin. Get rid of the statin. You need to be able to transport fat and the statins will block that. Come off your statin, you will not have a heart attack or a stroke because you came with a statin. You might have a heart attack or a stroke, hopefully not, but it's not because of the statin. Okay, so stop the statin. Then any medication that forces you to pee out sugar, come off that. Come off that. Your victosas and all the crazy medications that they put you on, Stop taking those medications, but continue to monitor your blood sugar. And then we get you off the other medications. Then we get you off the glipizide to the point that you're only on metformin by the time you have stopped using carbohydrates. And slowly over time, based on how long you've been diabetic, based on how aggressively you pursue coming off the carbohydrates, your blood sugar should come down. I try to run my diabetics around 120 until they're off medication. And then slowly over time, as you introduce intermittent fasting, you slowly, over the course of 60 to 90 days, begin to become more and more insulin sensitive. And what you'll see is your spikes aren't that bad and your blood sugars come down. One of the key reasons to use a CGM is because we want to get you to get to know how your body works. As you store insulin sensitivity, how does cortisol work? How does glucagon work? On a CGM, my blood sugar at average when I'm asleep and I'm fat adapted is around 65. As soon as I wake up in the morning, my blood sugar spikes by 20 to 30 points. It's called the dawn effect. It's basically my liver saying, hey, you need some energy to wake up. You need some energy. You're going to be busy this morning. Here it is. It's the liver squeezing sugar into your bloodstream. That's normal. You don't want a hyper normal uncontrolled uh, dawn effect. So you don't want to go up to 300, but I'll tolerate myself up to 110, 120 ideally below 100. And then when I'm putting my shoes on to go for my run or my walk, my sugar might spike up. I'm not going to treat that. Those are fine. And if I can go the whole day without eating, I can modify that blood sugar a little bit. I use caffeine. I use my coffee as a way to help my blood sugar. I use physical activity. There's a variety of different ways you can modify your blood sugar. But ultimately, you want to become insulin sensitive. And as you deprescribe that medication, keeping yourself in that slightly hyperglycemic zone, you can safely come off. Because the greatest danger is to lower blood sugar because of too much medication. And we don't want you consuming sugar to get better. You know, one other comment is that if your blood sugar is super low, if it's below 70 or 80 and you're feeling kind of sweaty and clammy, drink some whole milk rather than taking a glucose tablet. If the whole milk doesn't bring it up then you can go on to your more aggressive sugars. But we don't want you going back to sugars. And slowly over the course of two to three months, maybe up to six months, your type 2 diabetes should go into remission. One final caution. Treat this from an addiction perspective, not an allowance harm reduction perspective. The ketogenic diets all have an allowance of carbohydrates. In addiction management, the goal is zero. Zero smoking, zero alcohol, zero heroin, zero crystal meth, zero carbohydrates. 
And the closer you can get to zero, the quicker your body's going to become insulin sensitive. If it's possible, the more carnivorous you can be, the healthier you can be. High fat carnivore diet is the single best way to quickly put your diabetes into remission, particularly when you add in intermittent fasting or not eating for a long period of time each day, eating one or two meals a day. That's the principle. Unfortunately, I don't have a pill, I don't have an operation that I can do to you. This is incredibly hard work. You're going to have setbacks, but stay the course and your diabetes will go into remission. If we can help, give me a call or text me. The best thing to do is to text me to 561 517 0642 to set up, set up an appointment and we can help you along this journey and we can help you to deprescribe your medications as you stay away from carbohydrates. Good luck and thank you.